What's up guys, Joe here. Welcome back to my channel and today we are back with the Uno X career and we continue on with our hunt for the Malia Rosa at the Giro d'Italia. And I would say it was a fairly timid start to the race. We had a fairly decent first time trial and over all after seven stages there's not much action in the GC at all we're still there though with our main guys Tobias in 18th place and we have collected plenty of stage victories as well with Hal Vorsen and Rasmus Tiller picking up a double and I've alluded to our fitness peaks already Kron and Stornamite coming into form Tobias and our climbers, they're not quite there just yet. Hopefully, though, they're there ready for that big final week. In terms of dossier points as well, we're going to save the seven points available to us. Foss and Heinzer growing slowly in their interest. So let's take a look at the stages we have coming up today, shall we? I think we'll play five stages, starting in Foligno with the first big mountains of the Giro d'Italia stage eight and stage nine concluding in Sestola and we'll start to see finally the GC battle start to unfold. Stage 10 more for the sprinters slightly uphill. Stage 11 could be tricky with the Nasso di Gatto 7k average of 8% that really is quite steep and stage 12 is a 42k time trial. We know we'll lose time there. It's about limiting our losses. Just to show you the fitness peaks then, Tobias still is a little way off. He's at 80 points. He should be there maybe in four or five days and that would be timed perfectly. But that does mean for the first couple of mountain stages, such as this one, he won't be quite at his peak. David Godou, the young, talented Juan Ayuso and Tom de Milan are today's favourites. Oh, wow. But we get some huge race days here. Kron and Sharma get plus five. Zihannison gets a plus two. I think it would be a shame not to chase a stage win with either Kron or Sharma here. But again, similarly to the previous episode, Fitbit Scott really aggressively defending the Malia Rosa of their leader, Atia Volta. Understandably so, they're hardly allowing anyone to join the breakaway. As soon as anyone else tried to join that group of four, they chased them down. So the climb was difficult, but not too difficult. We still have 69 riders in the group and our guys are feeling good. It's time for us definitely to really try and make an impression on this stage. Oh, but a bad moment, bad moment for us. As Anders Johannesson falls, but another rider has fallen as well, and that man is David Godou. David Godou, one of the pre-race favourites, is behind. And Fitbit Scott are currently absolutely hammering the tempo on the front. Anders was about to protect his brother Tobias. But that is a massive blow for David Godou. I'm not sure he's going to be able to get back in here. So I'm thinking a viable tactic could be to try and use Kron or Sharma's good days and maybe even use them as an early GC card and maybe try to attack with them. But we have Ayuso, Fabro all trying to escape already. And I'm monitoring the gap to Godou at the bottom. It's 1 minute 55 back to David. He has plenty of teammates around him, but he is so far away from this group. And right now, Juan Ayuso has come to the front and he is just setting a rhythm. He's not even trying to attack. That is very intriguing. You rarely see this tactic from the AI, but now we have an attack. It's the Malia Rosa. A Tia Volta is on the move. We still have Kron, we still have Sharmik, and we still, of course, have Tobias ready to go for the final 10k. So there are just 27 riders left. Miguel Angel Lopez, of course, one of the favourites, is here. De Mulan here. Ayuso Godou is the big loser so far today. And we are going to try and make this final climb a little difficult and maybe. We can try and launch an attack with, I think, Anton Sharma. It could be a good card to play today, though. It's currently 4K to go. De Moulin is on the wheel. We now have Peo Bilbao looking to launch an attack. Ayuso, car, they're all going as well. And I think this means probably Tobias, or sorry, Sharma is going to have to work for Tobias. Let's go to 80, 3K to go. Peo Bilbao is on a fantastic day today we still have the pink jersey Atia Volta in this group but Hugh Carthy who's been on the front all day he is now struggling and he is out the back Simon Carr is struggling loads of riders are struggling Miguel Angel Lopez is struggling as well and to be honest our guys are really suffering too only 1.5k to go and when I use so Volta they all look pretty comfortable we're struggling though anyway under the flam rouge let's maybe just try and hold on to these wheels it would be a pretty successful stage there goes I use so. there goes Tobias they're going to try and win the stage it's not going to be and instead it is going to be Iolo Cometa's Geraint Thomas winning stage eight of the Giro d'Italia what a day this was and we lose time despite being on such 
a great day. Let us in here as well, but that is a blow for our GC chances. And poor David Godu through no fault of his own, losing three minutes today. Wow, wow, wow. What a stage and what a difficult stage. I was pretty confident looking at the race days, but we didn't quite deliver as good a result as I hoped. Geraint Thomas wins stage eight and at 36 years old, he announces himself as a real contender to win the Giro d'Italia. Bilbao, Sivakov, Volta, Dumoulin, all very strong indeed. Lopez was nowhere and Godou was very unlucky, which means we're now fourth and sixth in the GC, but Tia Volta holds on to pink. What a ride. And the big GC days do not stop there. We have stage nine to Sestela, the ski resort in Sestela. Pretty flat beforehand. It's all about that final climb. Let's give it our best. And I'll tell you what, guys, we have nailed the fitness peaks for the Giro. Really paying dividends not to overcook our guys trying to peak for the Giro. Of course, Tobias only a plus one, but we know he is not quite there in terms of his maximum fitness peak just yet, which means... Whilst Anton Sharmig is in such great form, I think we need to use him as a GC card to play. Of course, currently fourth. Let's try and keep him there today or even go for pink. And I really would love to join some breakaways, but it's just not really viable right now. Uh, we have Fitbit Scott joined by Jumbo Visma today, really protecting against a massive group going up the road. Although uh, today's group pretty capable, probably the best so far with Santiago Umba, the super talent from Androni and Colombia up the roads. And the gap to the breakaway has expanded to almost six minutes as we get a lovely view of the switchbacks um, on this descent. But looking at the Sestela climb, it's not particularly steep apart from one section with about 5k to go. That's where we need to attack if we're going to. All right, the climb to Sestela has begun and five minutes to the breakaway, they do have a good chance of taking the stage. You know, Zana, Rossa and Skusians have dropped everyone else from said breakaway. We are on the front now, really trying to press it. Oh God, you can even go 90, my man. And swiftly now we are seeing riders dropped from the main peloton, capable riders as well. We're down to 57. Tiller has been working hard on the front and we are now approaching the steeper section I mentioned. But look at this, it's Chris Hamilton on the attack for Fitbit Scott, feeling confident. And that is super intriguing because of course, they have the, uh, the Malia Rosa in their team and now we're seeing lots of attacks. Tobias and Charme caught out of position a little, I'm afraid. So it's Carr, Godou, Fortunato, Matteo Fabro, all riders who lost time on that first mountain stage who have made a move early. So 6k to go, we are literally in the midst of that steeper section, but we're not really in the position to make a move. We're just trying to follow the rhythm right now. And Simon Carr looking good today. Okay, Kron has gone. Kron has gone out the back. We have Tobias and Sharmig left in this group. Ayuso, Juan Ayuso, the ton of Juan Ayuso is on show right now as Lorenzo Rotta trying to hold on to win today's stage. And Tobias Harlan Johansson, you know what? He's struggling. He is really struggling. He needs to get in the wheel of Anton Sharmig, who is going to try and carry his teammate to the line in this group but that is going to be tough but look at Juan Ayuso he has 42 seconds on this group Tobias is completely cooked luckily a lot of riders in this group are as well 1k to go Sharmik you're gonna have to go for the line and Tobias is going to lose out today and up the roads Juan Ayuso is going to create heartbreak for Lorenzo Rossa as he wins stage nine Sharmik finishes pretty well too but Juan Ayuso the super talent and he has shown why today. The big loser though, Pavel Sivakov, is going to lose heaps of time. And Geraint Thomas, who just won a mountain stage, loses upwards of three and a half minutes. When looking at the start list, I highlighted David Godou, Miguel Angel Lopez, and this man right here, the 20-year-old Juan Ouse. He is so talented, guys, and he's shown it right now in this save. Anton Sharmig with a really good performance. Tobias just about held on to this group at 55 seconds. That was crucial. We have two riders in the top five. We haven't performed too well in the mountains, but we're right there. It's also really cool to see Andreas Lettnerson doing really well. Of course, a rider I mentioned we could perhaps sign next season, and this is really tempting me. And those performances in the mountains really have me looking to this screen. Tobias still a couple of days away 
from that fitness peak. We need it for week three. Sharmig, of course, is there already. But a break from the GC action today. It's a sprint stage, 182K. Let's get it. So we have decisions to make today. The breakaway are caught, but do we go for Tiller or Halvorsen? Halvorsen has decent form. Tiller has decent form, and it's a slightly uphill finish. Definitely suiting Rasmus Tiller more, if you ask me. So I've gone for a similar tactic to what we've done so far at this race. I follow Mads Pedersen, couldn't quite find the wheel of Merlia. Uh, Pedersen already has that. So he's going to stay there and see if it puts him in a good position. But we're going to work for Rasmus Tiller. All right, then five K to go. Matt Walls, we have David Van Der Poel to the front as well. Where is Hal Borson? In a decent position, but he's struggling with the uphill nature of this finish. Hull guard up to 95, getting blocked in though. Really not ideal. Hal Borson in a really good position right now. Storna Mitte is going to be doing some kind of lead out role. I know he can't really sprint, but he does have that massive plus five day. We have two K to go and Storna Mitte is ready to launch Rasmus Tiller under the flam rouge. He's getting blocked in a little bit. So is Hal Vorsen, but we're going to have to go for the line. Can we get through? Koi blocking us in, to be honest with you. And it's not a great result today. Could have been more for sure. And Jasper Philipson takes victory. Hal Vorsen, only P7 for us. That was a stage we could have got more out of, but you can't win them all. On to the next one. Bad news for Morton Hulgaard. He's not feeling too well, which we saw in that stage. Hopefully, he can continue. He is a crucial domestique for us on the flat portions. Okay, Hulgaard should be okay after a couple of days, but Rasmus Tiller now not feeling too good either. Hopefully, our team aren't all catching COVID or something. An intriguing stage on stage 11 then. 250k almost but the Nasso di Gasso could be quite challenging and we could see a very select group. So Rasmus Tiller continues in the Chiclamino jersey. Haven't really mentioned that so far at the Giro this year, but that could definitely be a goal for him. And I do think another goal for him could be to join today's breakaway and maybe try and win the stage like this. Despite him apparently not feeling too well, he's on a plus three day. And even Halvorsen, am I being too ambitious to say he could get over that climb. I probably am, uh, despite that plus four. There we have it then. The group is gone. We have six riders up the road, including Victor Campanats, including GVA as well. A very, uh, very much declined GVA, to be fair, considering his attributes. But Tiller, like I said, if we can get a gap, he can win this stage. So the gap to the breakaway seems to have maxed out at around five and a half minutes. If we can get to the foot of the Nasso de Gatto with around half of this advantage, maybe Tiller has a chance. We need at least two and a half minutes on the peloton. Sadly for us, that is not going to happen. We have 40k to go in the stage and we have less than a minute on the peloton. The breakaways have had no success at this Grand Tour so far. But now we can use Rasmus Tiller's prowess on the climb today. 73 Mountain uh, does the classic specialist really. Uh, let's take a position to the front. Try and make it a little difficult because seemingly after all that chasing, no one wants to do anything on the climb. All right, 4K to go in the climb. It really hasn't been too tough. Hal Vorsen is surviving right now. And I think our goal has to be to try and get him over this climb. Campanarts, by the way, from that breakaway, still going, but he seems to have cracked. So riders getting dropped all the time. I think we still have the likes of Tim Malia in this group, though. Olaf Koy, of course, a very capable sprinter is gone. David van der Poel is gone. Where is Malia and where is Philipson? Is my question. Here we go. Jasper Philipson out the back. I've already spotted Tim Malia as well behind. We also have David Decker. Sam Bennett has been dropped. This is the group with Malia, Bennett, Viviani as well. Just 83 riders at the front. And Chris Halvorsen is still here. What a chance for him today. And it looks like the group of sprinters has given up behind. They're way too far back. This is such a great opportunity, guys. Oh, and a big crash. Big crash, as I say it, Rowan Dennis goes down, Booman, no GC guys. Of course, competition still here. I've spotted Davide Ballerini, among others. So it's uh, by no means wrapped up so far, but Hal Vorsen really in great form. And we do need to control these attacks as well. All right, five K to go. And we have Kron, who is going to act as Chris Hal Vorsen's lead out man. Everyone else, make sure you're just staying in position and let's try and control these attacks with Kron. We have 
from Baal. Ballerini trying to make a move, but Halvorsen in such a great position. What a chance this is. As I've said many times already, it's a long straight into the finish. There goes Kron kicking into the final kilometer. There goes Halvorsen. Godu, Fetter, Aaron Buru, Mads Pedersen still here as well. And is he going to be denied? By Mads Pedersen. No, he's not. Chris Alvorsen wins stage 11 of the Giro d'Italia. What a victory, guys. Mads Pedersen came with a mad amount of power at the end there. I thought he had us, but we just hold off the Dane and Norway wins another stage at the Giro. That does actually move him into the Ciclamino jersey ahead of his teammate now. Important though to analyse the GC one final time because we do have the time trial coming up tomorrow and I think Tom de Moulin should have his sights set on the Malia Rosa. For us though we know we're going to lose time over 42 kilometres into Barolo. It's just about limiting our losses. So what I have found throughout the course of Morton Hulgar's time trial is that the AI are very cautious through that middle sector and that downhill portion. Let's see where Hulgar finishes his TT here and we get him a top 15. He overtook Danny Van Poppel as well. Yves Lampart, a much better time trialist. Can he take the provisional best time? No, he cannot. So it's going to be remarkably important throughout this TT to keep an eye on everyone. The likes of Geraint Thomas still only four minutes down despite that shocking display in the mountains after winning a stage. But guys, I can see it already. Tobias has a massive plus five day. And I was about to say, I'm, I'm starting to realise that the race day conditions in this time trial are so important. We have Tij Benut third place somehow up there with the pure TT specialists. Oh, that is perfect. Come on Tobias and come on Sharmig, let's go. So often in real life, to me, it seems that you see negative splits. But for me, I'm trying to go really, really hard with both Sharmig and Johannesson. We have this big climb in the first section of the course and that is our rider's big strength. So we need to use it. So Tobias through the first split, is this tactic working? Let's see, he is 34th place. That's not too bad. Now we need to recover in this descent. And Sharmig across the line as well. We spent so much energy, let's hope it's it's good. 1 minute 40 down. So he is behind Tobias up the road. Okay. When are you so fourth place? Hunting us down already is the Spaniard and de Mulan in that European Champions jersey. Let's see where he is at the first split. He is fourth place as well. But what a ride by Ayuso. We really have some funky performances today. Sivkov not doing great. A particularly strong time trialist, I would say. Fortunato having a stinker. Miguel Angel Lopez having a really good TT so far. He's 26th through the second split. Chris Hamilton as well for Fitbit Scott doing really well. Bill Bow, an absolute stinker for Bahrain. Lettnersund as well. I thought it'd be a big winner today. Tobias doing really okay, I would say. 1 minute 22 down at that second split. And Sharmig holding position as well. Are you so though? He has us in his sights. De Moulin, he's fourth place. Come on then, Tobias, keep pushing. I think we've managed this pretty nicely. We can now recover, probably go to 65 on this final little descent. Lettnerson up the road has almost caught Pale Pilbao up the road. Sharmig, some way off the pace of Johannesson, I think. Let's really push it now into the final K. It's Lettnerson, he is going to overtake Pale Pilbao. Real good negative split there by Andreas Lettnerson. Sharmig down to 65. Johannesson, press it to the line, my man. On the plus five day, such an important day in this GC. That's maybe a little too hard. Let's see him across the line up to 99. And he is going to finish two minutes and 14 down. And I'm okay with that, you know. Oh my word, look at this. Juan Ayuso destroying Anton Sharmig in this TT. We've cracked to the line under the pressure of seeing him pass this. Ayuso, third place on the day behind only Kung and Thomas. Sharmig, a disappointing ending for sure. He loses three minutes, 68th on the day. But Tom de Moulin, I think, is going to claim the Malia Rosa. Let's see, because the Tia Volta in the pink jersey right now is on a flyer. Can he hold off Tom de Moulin? This is going to be an incredible Giro for Volta if he can keep this up. He's seventh place. Let's see. What a big day in the GC battle at the Giro d'Italia. Geraint Thomas wins his second stage of the race. De Moulin, Ayuso and Atia Volta though. Those guys are in such great form. Electrifying form, I would say. For Tobias, that was the best we could hope for. A plus five day, just over two minutes down. On When you look at his TT, I mean, he's finished literally just behind Pavel Sivkov. 
look at the difference in TT attribute guys for of course Anton Sharmig a little more disappointing but he's okay so that leaves us sixth and eighth place in the GC we started the day fourth and fifth it's okay we're still there two and a half and just over three minutes down respectively whilst Tom de Mulan sees the Malia Rosa yet again but yeah like I said Garrett Thomas is a yo-yo he's not consistent despite him showing great uh phases at the Giro d'Italia but to Mulan Volta and Juan Ayuso, they look to be our three big rivals for that podium. How Vorson holds the Chiclamino jersey, Ayuso in blue, whilst Volta will move from pink to the white jersey. We're just outside the F in that team classification as well. Well, guys, I hope you're enjoying this chase for the pink jersey just as much as I am. I am loving it. And we're somewhere off that Maglia Rosa for now, but with those time trialing kilometers out of the way, I really hope we can now move forward with that fitness peak coming as well for Tobias in the next episode. If you enjoyed today, hit like down below, subscribe to the channel as well if you're new, and I will see you guys in the next one.